Hello everyone. In this video, importing trusses into protostructure via DXF files will be explained. Firstly, an axis system must be inserted to determine the location of the truss system. Let's set the axis spacing as 25 meters. After that, steel columns can be inserted at the axis intersections. When we open the 3D view, we can see the columns. After triggering the truss command, we can pick the endpoint of the columns. Trusses can be modeled by snapping to columns, beams, or points on other trusses. The truss generator window will be launched. We can see that there are different types of parametric truss templates. In addition, we can generate user-defined trusses. Moreover, we can import trusses that are drawn in DXF files into protostructure. To do this, click the Import from DXF button. Then, pick the DXF file you want to use. When we examine the drawing, we see that the drawn truss has a span of 22 meters. We should also make sure that the truss is drawn using line entities. Another important point is that all entities in the drawing should be exploded using the explode command. Let's switch back to protostructure. Although the DXF file is still open in the CAD editor, we can proceed with the import process. After selecting the DXF file, click the open button. Before starting the import, the units must be correctly selected. If there is any information about scaling, this information can be entered on the Scale Factor field. We can specify the supports at the start and end points of the truss by using the Pick command. At this point, we can specify whether this truss will be supported by the column at the top cord or bottom cord. Here I want the truss bottom cord to be supported by the column flange, so I pick the top points of the first and last cords of the truss. If you want the truss to sit on the columns, you can also select bottom cords as the support locations. As you pick the supports, you can see that X, Y, and Z coordinates are assigned. Now, we can continue by clicking the import button. The imported drawing is transferred to the user-defined truss editor. At this stage, we can see that all elements are categorized as general. Colors of the assigned member types can be seen on the legend. We need to assign the types to the members to be able to proceed with the import. Firstly, select the top cord. It is sufficient to click once on the member to select it. If you select a member mistakenly, or you want to deselect it, you can hold down Ctrl or Shift key on the keyboard and click on the member again. Now, let's select the bottom cord members. We can set the cord type by right-clicking and picking the set as bottom cord option. We can make the assignments to diagonal and vertical members similarly. We can select the elements either by clicking on them or by drawing a window. We can continue after completing the cord type assignments. We don't need the first and last verticals on the truss because we want to connect the truss bottom cord to the flange of the column so we can delete the last and first vertical cords. Because we are working on the user-defined truss editor window, it is possible to make any changes to this truss. By selecting the commands on the ribbon toolbar, we can add or remove elements. Close the truss editor by clicking the OK button. This will save the changes and insert the truss between the two points we picked in the beginning. 
We can open the Trust Generator window by double-clicking on the Trust Member or by right-clicking and selecting Properties. Since this is a user-defined Trust, the Trust Editor window will automatically launch. When we click the Members tab, we can see that default sections are assigned top chords, bottom chords, diagonals, and verticals. These default sections originate from protostructure settings. That means, while making a top chord type assignment to the truss elements, protostructure will use the default top chord section definition. Similarly, the same procedure will be followed for other types of members. If you want to assign different sections to members, you can do so by clicking on the member category title or the member itself on the table. Member and fixities are imported with their default values. Here, we can also set the member end conditions as hinged or fixed. We can assign splices to the top and bottom chords of the truss by using the options on the splice tab. After finalizing the editing of the truss, you can save your custom truss to the library and reuse later in your other projects or share it with your colleagues. We can easily check the member end conditions on the analytical model. Before going through the analytical model, we should complete the building analysis. As soon as the building analysis is completed, the analytical model will be displayed automatically. In the analytical model window, the end release conditions of the members are indicated by red dots. These red dots represent a hinge definition. So, here we see that all the endpoints of the top and bottom chords and the diagonals are assigned hinges. End release conditions of the members can be edited using the Members tab on the Truss Properties dialog. To copy the trusses, firstly we duplicate the columns that we used as support. After that, we should specify a reference point by right-clicking on the truss and copying it on the other columns. 